Well, it is that time of year and I know everyone has many things to do. So I am going to open this public hearing. Um, da, da, da. Let's see, we have a number of things. Do we have Mr. Robert Wood here? Yes, it looks like we do. So let me start with that. This is a virtual continued public hearing will be held Thursday, December 9th. 2021, 7 p.m. on the petition of Robert Wood for a variance from the front setback to construct a two-car garage on the property at 33 Anthony Road, North Reading, Mass, Map 30, Parcel 53, owned by Robert M. Wood Jr., according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Mr. Wood, if you are here, would you like to join us and tell us briefly what you have planned? Uh, yeah, so I'm actually just planning to do an addition to the house, which would be a two car garage um, and redoing the first floor and adding a couple of bedrooms to above the garage. Okay, the, um, I have in our package, a schematic of the proposed addition and let's see Kathy I think you said you are not able to share your screen this evening is that right no I'm not okay let me see if I can send this to Madam Chair. Me. If I can speak for a second on this, um, that's a future street, and that's the only street that could actually, if the developer, which is the the lot in the back, has been for years, it's been subject to uh, possible development for the past 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it really hasn't gone anywhere. But it's the only only possibility for anybody to actually have a a a uh, street into that real lot. Um, and it's not really to uh, subject this person to uh, frontage, it's just that it's a future street. So mm -hmm. I, I just wanna make sure that everybody's clear with that. Thank you, Jerry. So, you know, I see it on the, on the plan as being a future street. And since it is a potential street that makes that what looks a bit like a side yard, be a front yard. So you get the benefit of the um, additional setback of being 40 yards rather than 25. And I am not positive, given that I got this in a secure file that I can share it with you. Um, so be that as it may, unless someone there, or if one of my board members has the ability to share this plan. My firewall won't let me put it up. That being said, um, it looks like the proposed addition is, is that 35 feet from the future street sideline? Thirty, 35.3 feet. Yeah, that's, that's correct, that's 35 feet. <clears throat> and we don't have any elevations. Um, Mr. Wood, could you tell me again, how tall is the proposed addition? Is that a one-story or a two-story two addition? It would be a two-story. Okay. And it looks like your septic is behind it. Do you still meet the setback requirements for the front yard? Do you actually you don't? You'd need a variance both on the for both fronts. <laughs> the front on Anthony Road and the front on the future street. And you're already non-conforming to the setback on your westerly side. All right. <laughs> looks like the way I'm seeing it, it looks like you need a variance all. Um, two fronts and one side. The, well, you don't need a variance for the existing, um, well. existing non-conforming side, but you will need one for this 
increased for the addition for the front on Anthony and the front on Future Street. Why would it be on the front for Anthony? It shouldn't be further, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know that it wouldn't be any further than my existing dwelling. It's not, but your existing dwelling is in the setback. And so you're increasing square footage in the setback. Okay. Um, you, do you happen to have any elevation showing what the proposed addition would look like? I do not. Not readily, not readily available that I, that I could share. Did L, LJR develop any? Your, uh, your engineering interest? Are these uh, the only I, that you've gotten? Yeah, that's all I've gotten. Okay. Questions board? Well, it just, it takes note that the, uh, all due respect, the, the elevations, especially when you're coming into a, you know, you're coming into a setback are, are helpful to the board in terms of rendering um, a variance, especially. Um, and I think uh, community planning even noted the same in their review of the, um, the project. Uh, it's that's the first I'm hearing of it. All right. Well, let, let us share that with you because that is something that we typically require. I hadn't even noticed the CPC's comments, but um, okay, in a, Madam Chairman, if I might, in a memo uh, dated November eighth from uh, Community Planning to the Zoning Board, uh, the committee noted. Uh, uh, the commission noted uh, the application should contain more information, including an elevation drawing. Uh, I'm trying to scroll through um, this, excuse me, to see what if look the um, as well as a uh, number of stories uh, and grading uh, plan uh, for property to the septic system uh, in what is proposed um, by the applicant at the end. Uh, and, um, and they just asked, they, they also asked about hardship, which is, um, hasn't been brought up forward, but in, in terms of the, um, the elevation, um, and that it's just, it's, it's a pretty common uh, submission, uh, respectfully. Uh, great. Um... I don't have a, a real, from what I can see on this plan in terms of the massing of it, I, you know, it doesn't, I don't have a, a problem with what I see thus far, but typically we would request and receive the, the elevation so you can see what this would look like on the, on the lot, as well as to inform any neighbors of what will be, was being proposed. Do we have any um, abutters or neighbors who are here to comment on this public hearing. I don't see anybody um, looking to get hearing. acknowledged. Hearing none. And I just lost my packet, where'd it go? All right. So, and Mr. Wood, do you, I know, I know your engineer or architect in order to build this will need to give you some proposed elevations. When do you think you might have those that you could share with us? I mean, I can reach out to them tomorrow as soon as, as soon as I, as soon as, as soon as possible, so. Okay. So what I would suggest um, if we don't have any further comments is uh, for you, for us to continue your hearing for you to provide those to us, and then we can take a look at those at our next hearing. I'm uh, curious, Mr. Wood, is there a timeline uh, calendar on on the project? No, I, we're we're still in the design phase. So this was this was really step one that we had the drawings rendered by the architect. Um, we knew with the setback with the existing septic that we were going to have to kind of shift around to make sure that we didn't. Kind of impose into the septic setback so 
um, yeah, this is just the original drawings. Okay, great. Yeah, I, and I can't imagine, hopefully they're not thinking about pouring a foundation in the next several months. No, we, we haven't even selected the builder where it's still on the design phase. Yeah, you're, they, they, sh they shouldn't until spring. But um, <laughs> all right, if that works for you, I would suggest that um, you request an extension. Do we have a meeting scheduled for next month, Kathy? We pull no, I was, I was looking at could either be the 6th or the 13th. I don't have any hearings waiting in the wings, so. I will be gone one of those. I just don't know what it is yet. So <laughs> that being said, does anyone else know what their schedule might be? January 6th or 13th? I would Nothing say Disney, Kathy, Kathy, aren't you on vacation one of those weeks? I'm sorry, what? No, no I'm gone the end of the month. Okay, sorry. I thought it I might had be, that on the calendar view. It might be best to just put it as the middle of the month, given the holiday, in case somebody has to get notices out to um, for proper um, publication or whatever. Uh, okay. Just. I agree. So let's say the 13th. Um, Mr. Wood, for the formality of it, would you like to request an extension until January 13th? Yes, please. Wonderful. Um, so and once those drawings are developed, if you could just um, have your, your people forward them, the sooner we get them in the file, all the better. It just okay. uh, is of great assistance. Sure. Uh, up Load those ready to the, the website or drop them off at town hall. Kathy, can he email them to you at town hall? He can either put them in the portal or he can bring them in physically. Um, I think Jerry's probably going to want them physically anyway when he gets the building permit, but that's a I, little ways off. I keep forgetting that we have our great portal now. So, yep. And yeah, they. Oh, it's so upload them to the portal. And Kathy, do you get Kathy and Jerry, do you get alerted when something's been uploaded? So then you can go share it with us. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I love it. All right. So we are continuing this until 13th. I just want to flag that on the calendar. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood. We will see you in a month. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Okay. Moving on. What do we have next? 271 Main Street, continuation of the appeal of the building inspector for a variance to install two electrical vehicle charges with scrolling signage. Applicant Michael Hirschberg, representative of Volta. Mr. Hirschberg, I see you there. Welcome back. Thank you. Great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we've had so, we've had had a little time to, to think about this, or at least I have. Um, mm -hmm. And it seems like, it, you know, that the, the reason you need a variance is not because it's an electrical vehicle charger, but because it's it's signage. And yep. we have fairly, fairly robust signing signage provisions um, in town. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's kind of curious from what it seems like you had gone to CPC originally for approval of the location. Correct. Yes. And then it comes to us on a variance for the actual signage component of it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the problem, problem here is uh, the essentially scrolling signage is not permitted. 
um, for a business, there's a limited number of exterior signs that they may have. Um, we've already seen that plaza come in front of us a couple of times for their, for their main signage up on the street, mm -hmm. which was expanded a couple of years ago to add another a couple of feet, additional feet worth of signage on it. Um, so I, I think we're, we're kind of in a, in a tricky position here. And I'd say, mm -hmm. honestly, um, even though CPC approved the location as a, a frequent user of that parking lot yes. and, the, um, and the chaos that exists right in front of Stop and Shop, I, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest putting a vehicle charger station right there. I mean, I think if there is an appropriate space for it in that parking lot, it would be away from the front door someplace back in the side where you don't have someone who's taking up additional space who is taking up additional time charging a vehicle in the you know the heavy heaviest traffic flow spot of this center um so if i may uh, madam chairwoman so i Basically, the way Volta's business model works um, is in order to, you know, fund the free electric charging that we're passing back to our drivers, we do need to be in an area that captures a wide pedestrian audience. Um, ultimately, I mean, these stations are going up, I believe, if I'm just going to refer back to my plans here, I see a lot of plans all day, uh, but these are both going, um, okay, they're going at little, one's going in a hash aisle kind of area at the end of a parking lane and then the other is going in a landscape island so i mean specifically with the second station being in a landscape island it's out of the way as far as traffic is concerned um i certainly see um the board's point about um the first station being at kind of a curvature there in the roadway as drivers come into the parking lot um but ultimately i mean Certainly, I understand the traditional aspect of an EV charging station um, like Tesla's and everybody else are being in the back of the store. It's just that we're unable to provide our business model in that way if we are at the back or at an area that's away. And I mean, ultimately, we're just trying to, Volt is sort of coming into this at the head of the curve, you know, as more people adopt EVs, um, they'll be more present in the you know, in the parking lot as people continue to drive through. Um, and we found that, you know, they're positioned in an area where there's low speed traffic anyway. Um, and ultimately, I mean, we've not had any real incidents where our signs have been struck just because we, we protect them well. We'd be willing to, you know, follow the building inspector's um, recommendations and requests, or excuse me, building inspector's requirements as far as protecting the signage. Um, if there was bothered needs or something like that, that would, you know, be will, would move us from being in the back to being up front and providing a safe area for our drivers to charge or for any electric vehicle charger, so, the public to was, charge. To, to be candid, I was less concerned about the safety of your signage as the safety of pedestrians and other cars and the distraction that the signage might present to someone driving by the front of stop and shop when they should be looking at the crosswalk and then they're looking at signage instead. Um, so to that point, so the way our stations are positioned to, they're meant to really, we use what's called the Volta V. Um, so if you're at the front, I know it's kind of corny. If you're at the front of the store, the idea is that the screen would face toward the drive aisle. Um, and so, and they also dim, um, you know, when the night went, when it gets darker, it's like a cell phone, um, you know, that's off of a charger as it adjusts throughout the day, the screen will adjust. So it's not blind to the eye or overly eye catching, so to speak. Really what we're trying to capture is pedestrians walking through and catching it as they're walking into the store. That's how we can sell the advertisement space to our clients on the advertisement side. Um, and so that's really what it's doing. I mean, we're not, it, when it sits in the in a V format, um, I can show my pictures again, if you'd like. Um, we're not um, really trying to create, yeah, this is a good one. Hang on one second. I'm just gonna share screen if I might. Um, so 
if you look here, um, so this is in Walpole um, as a present installation. Um, oops, excuse me. Um, can everyone see this okay? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's truly, I mean, you can see this is the middle of the day. The screen is, is dark enough. I mean, it's, it's certainly visible. I'm not certainly, you know, trying to detract from that, but um, it's not meant to be bright, right? It's not, there's no animation that's like popping and things like that. These are static images that just change on quick flips. They're very, very quick. They don't, they're not meant to create, they don't dissolve. They don't do any of those things that might have kind of been those like fun PowerPoint things that I remember doing in school. Um, they are really just quick flips and quick changes. Um, and so really, I mean, they again, just are capturing the drive aisle. Um, and someone would really have to be looking out of their way in order to see it as they're driving into the parking lot. Um, so that's just kind of what I just wanted to share there. And again, as they, as you get further away, the smaller and smaller they get. Um, so this is going back further and further in the parking lot, just to kind of give a little bit of visual. Um, yeah, this is at the front of the store here. I mean, very hard to tell on a bright sunny day. This was, I think in July. Um, so this is much different than what it looks right now, but certainly it's, you know, that's the idea is to not be over distracting, but still have our infrastructure in an area that we can still capture a pedestrian audience that's walking by. Thanks, Michael. No, I appreciate that. Um, and I Madam Chair, did we receive a letter from the, um, the planning board? I believe we received two memos from the planning board as well as I believe we have a uh, member of the planning board here who may want to share some thoughts on this as well. Um, before I turn it over to, uh, for their input though, uh, you and Bob have comments or thoughts on this. I'd like to get your initial thoughts before we kind of go to the public on this. My concerns are basically that um, it, and it's it's it, I don't think our bylaws are really had ever anticipated this kind of a signage request, and that concerns me in two well in two different ways. One that we're not able ideally. Uh, equipped by the bylaw to possibly address this innovation in terms of signage. But at the same time, uh, if we get ahead of it and we find ourselves posed with applications, and this, um, this is not to in any way um, discredit, uh, in any way um, uh, speak ill, if. if a phrase of um, of this application or the the, the request therein uh, that it creates almost a um, a difficult way in which to uh, gauge <laughs> future applications. Uh, slippery slope is too cliche in this case, and I don't think it's appropriate either. Uh, I understand the idea of of the signage being attached to the electric vehicle charging promotion or opportunity, but that population is one that I don't really understand specifically for the town of North Reading in terms of who would access it. And inevitably, isn't it more about the signage than, than the charging, uh, you know, that, so my focus in terms of this is the, the signage and I know we haven't, this, this current board hasn't been posed with um, signage requests, uh, electronic in nature or, you know, sliding or whatever, changing images. Uh, but I, I do know of past boards that have been approached by business interests in this town and in the past um, haven't succeeded in those regards. And that it's not that we're tied to our past, but at the same time, um, uh, just by my nature and um, my own uh, 
position, I, 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 I'm very cautious in terms of, of this, of this um, application. The scale of it, uh, I don't think is so much the issue as it is the underlying um, proposal. In this case, it's just probably the size of, a, it's probably smaller than most homes televisions in terms of the screen size, but it's not that inevitably. It is, what does it present for future business op uh, applicants or owners that want to say, well, why can't I put something of a similar nature uh, in a parking space that's probably closer to, in this case, Main Street or some other uh, more uh, traveled route. And I, I, I have a hard time gauging how to best weigh what could be a very, very likely um, situations that are gonna be presented to us, which our bylaws are kind of um, not instructive on in terms of the nature of this um, signage. It's not, in other words, let me kind of put it more simply. This wouldn't be such a hard question if it was just a big neon sign, right? Because when I read the bylaw, it's almost as if they had anticipated, you know, something that, you know, used to see in Washington Street in, in downtown Boston, where I used to walk through as a child, a kid uh, going to high school, it, big flashy and that kind of nature. And I think the town always wanted to avoid that. And that's not the case here, but it's not that it's just, it's, not that it's the progeny of that, but it, there's a relationship there. And I have a, sin, a sincere concern that you're going to find an interest on a more main street location that is going to point to um, this, this um, uh, uh, device and say, mine's not that much different than that. And, but it could be, it's just location in an odd sort of way is always the case. Could become distracting to cause problems. And I think we have to keep a view of that in terms of the decision being made in the immediate. Thank you, Bob. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar in this space when it comes to electric vehicles and uh, electrification. Um, and, and I think, you know, to pick up kind of where Bob left off. Uh, one question I had asked Kathy, I, I wasn't sure if Michael was going to, uh, if, if you were going to offer um, one or more of the similar bylaws that, that you've, as a company, have presented to others in the past. Because I think that's one of the challenges that, that Bob referred to is, um, you know, we, no one anticipated, you know, there's probably more rules and regulations that apply to farm animals in town than there are to, you know, signage. Um, and, and so having, you know, electrification is here to stay. Um, and, and, you know, climate change and, and moving more towards electric, but also there's the coordination between um, the utility, you know, when it comes to, to peak usage times, um, you know, I mean, like one of the questions is it, is it anticipated um, that during, you know, a monthly or an annual peak that the unit would be either tuned down or shut off? Yes, um, so we can certainly, these stations are very malleable in a lot of ways. Um, and so what we can do, um, I, I certainly have draft ordinances that I could send over to the board. I mean, if we wanted to continue it and sort of, I could change the language to meet the town a little bit better. Um, so that's an option, uh, but certainly just, I guess, to kind of talk a little bit more about the station, about the station itself, bless you, um, is that we can shut them off at night if a store, you know, at store time closing, um, they do dim in the evening. Um, so as it gets dark, the stations, you know, just like a cell phone, you know, you wouldn't want something bright in your eyes. Um, it's, it, they do adjust um, and we can certainly, you know, meet whatever, 
you know, we're, we're willing to negotiate here, I guess is my point. Um, and, you know, we're willing to do what it takes to be on, you know, to work with the town. Obviously, we want to be there. Um, I am local to the area, but Volta as a whole is a West Coast company that has now grown and is now national. Um, and so we want to make sure that the reputations that we build in our communities are solid and strong. Um, and so we want to be there for the long haul and for the future. And so we are willing to do what we can do to work with the town. Obviously, we also are balancing that same idea with our business model to be upfront, you know, to make sure we're capturing best rate audience so that way the company, um, you know, can continue to, to exist as it is. Um, but ultimately, you know, we look to ourselves as like, hey, you know, we can certainly sell this ad space, but we're also, you know, committing a public service um, by providing free electric vehicle charging and, you know, ultimately encouraging electric vehicle adoption. You know, it's like the old saying goes, you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, we're trying to be out there. We're trying to be part of this whole process as we continue to evolve. Um, and so I think I, I kind of went on a couple of different tangents there, but more or less, yes, we do have a draft ordinance and yes, we can do a lot with these stations. So I'm, I'm, I think that would be helpful for for us because there are the two issues. There's the, you know, the, the locational issue and the, the signage piece. Um, and again, th this is not going to be the first or last of someone mm -hmm. who has an idea that that comes before us. Um, you know, some of the some of the fast charge units, um, you know, have have what looks like two of those size screens um, on them. So, and, and, and it's probably not a business model <laughs> that, that's the same. It's probably just trying to get added revenue from designing it that way. Um, but, but I do think it's something that um, we're, we're not equipped. Um, and, and as Bob is saying, it, you know, coming to the appeals board is, is basically, you know, asking for, a, a, a special permission. Um, and, and in this case, I, I can say in the time that I've been on the board, we've not had anything like it, um, when it when it comes to signage. So I think it would be helpful um, and it would be helpful, you know, uh, Madam Chair, for us in, in the, uh, the, 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 um, the other board, he's already gone before um, to understand, you know, this and, and quite frankly, to take on, you know, electric vehicle charging as one of the issues that ought to be looked at. I, I think that it is something, electrical vehicle charging is something that'll need to be considered by the town on sort of a broader scope. It is not something that is addressed in our bylaws. It is currently drafted. Um, and to the extent that, Michael, you want to share some versions that you've seen in other towns, it's, it's definitely helpful for our planning um, person, but it's not something that we could incorporate into the bylaws ourselves that of course has to go through town meeting. Um, so it wouldn't be something that we could get the benefit of in short order, but it could be something that could be considered by the town more for longer range um, planning. I do see that we have a- oh, I, um, what, One additional comment that I um, meant to bring up. What's interesting about this proposal by Volta is that Volta's business interest to the town isn't like your classic idea of signage. So in other words, Stop and Shop has signage and whether they have a signage that's physically on their building or the sign that sits on the street that says this is Stop and Shop, Volta doesn't have a, effectively a building or an address. It is effectively what we're talking about here is is a is is a billboard. Now yeah, it's essentially it's it's, it's billboard signage. It's right. smaller, that, but it's I, but that's that's what it is. I mean, it's not. Right. You don't have a so, physical presence. They're not advertising their business. It's it's a revenue mechanism. And to that point, it I maybe I sound like generational go, but that holds sway with me because um, that, that directional that we're talking about here for purposes of within the town of North Reading, uh, just from living here, I, I 
the only I I I'd be shocked if there Jerry, you might be able to help me on this. There, is there more than one billboard uh, in this entire town? And the only one I can think of is the one that borders the town as you head along 28 towards Reddick. Mm -hmm. And my point is a very simple one that um, a lot of our decisions are always based on the idea of what is um, uh, in the case of a variance, um, it's CPC, we did it in the last one. What is the need that's being presented by the petitioner? Well, the need here is different from maybe that of, a, of an established bricks and mortar interest that has had long standing or is the beginning of a long standing business interest that is part of, truly a part of this community. And um, that is also, an interest that um, I've been weighing since the last meeting as well. Um, if, if I might be able to comment on that, Bob, I mean, certainly, Volta, I guess, I, I agree with you. I mean, we are exactly as you explained it, um, both you and, and um, the Madam Chairwoman. Um, I would also just say, I guess, you know, that certainly by partnering with Stop and Shop, we are um, in a lot of ways, you know, we're working together and collectively. It incentivizes um, EV drivers to shop at Stop and Shop because we're right there or to utilize the Atlantic Plaza um, and other stores that are within that area. Um, so, I mean, certainly that is there. Uh, but again, it's, you know, we're there to incentive, you know, it's, it, it creates an incentive piece by us placing electric vehicle stations there. I mean, certainly, I mean, Personally, for my own interest, I love Market Basket. I shop at Market Basket all the time. However, uh, I certainly understand that if I owned an electric vehicle personally, I would be that much more interested in shopping, shopping at Stop and Shop, knowing that I could charge my vehicle while I'm there. Uh, again, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I see that we have um, Mr. Hayden, the CPC. Would, would you have something you'd like to share? With us. Yes, it, Madam Chair. Um, originally, when Volta came to us, we actually were having live meetings, not on Zoom. And uh, they shared their paper drawings of what they were going to do. We got, didn't see any of the, um, what you just saw tonight of the lovely pictures uh, of locations like the other stop and shop. Um, but we were under the impression that this was going to be. EV charging without this advertising. It was not brought to us that there was going to be advertising on it until I started digging through it. And I heard from uh, someone um, that said that, oh yeah, that company does that and they do it for advertising. That's what, that's how they make their money. If you go well, to this many places that have EV chargers and you put your credit card in and you can pay for the electricity you use right there. Um, so that's kind of what we thought was going to happen. We see they had this lovely, you know, they, they had a, a picture of what the EV charging station is going to be. And it says Volta on it. Well, I didn't mind having Volta on, a, on the charging station because most charging stations have the name of, of what it is. Uh, so that was one of the reasons why I think we all decided that it would be a good um, fit in that it would be EV charging and it would be a great thing there. Then once we, I heard about this, I started looking into the specifications of the charging station and anybody driving an EV vehicle going to stop and shop for a half an hour or an hour to shop they'd be better off charging at home because it is such a trickle charge. It's, it's the, the amount of charge that comes off of, the, of this unit is so small, it's gonna take probably two days to charge a car fully. Um, and so from what, that's, that's from what I understand. Um, and you know, you can look at what the the the, uh, the rates of charge are on that. It's it's very small, um, and I, I'll bet if a person with a Tesla goes in there and, and tries to charge it, they probably won't waste their time trying to get that spot the next time. But the the most problematic issue with these things are 
is the signage. It's not for the people driving. It's for people walking. And those people are going to walk in the drive aisles like they do today. And they're going to be paying attention to a moving sign and not to where they're going. We already have enough trouble with people walking and looking at their cell phones and texting. I don't know. I've almost hit a, a couple of people because they're just not paying attention. They just walk right out in front of you. This is going to happen more with these moving signs because they're changing. They're waiting for the next thing to happen. So they're staring at the sign. So that, you know, that that's one of the issues we had with it. And again, it's a, a moving sign, which is not allowed in our bylaw signage bylaw. So and I believe um, we did send two memos. One was basically from the chair, but it was it was uh, that was the first one that came out uh, the beginning of the week. And then another one came out Tuesday night from us. Um, from the rest of the board. And uh, I think the whole board uh, is not in favor of, of this right now. We are actually backing uh, the building inspector's decisions. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Appreciate your, your input and your background on that. Um, do we have anyone else in the audience who is here for this public hearing? Uh, Mr. Hayden, if I might, before um, Bob Rain for the pump, is the, uh, it sounds as if the, um, the letter that you sent um, regarding this application is, may not reflect the current position of the committee, or do you, do you want to offer an opinion at this time? We, we, we sent two letters, um, and I don't know if you've got both of them. Um, Mr. Pierce wrote one. They were both sent by Danielle McKnight, our planning administrator. Um, one was sent probably on the 8th, which is yesterday, because um, we met on the 7th. Um, and then there was one prior to that. I don't know what the date of that one was. It may have been the 6th or the 7th. So it may have been last. One from the 6th and one from the 9th. Um, so then, All right. Yes. So the, the ninth is the one that came out from when we had our meeting on Tuesday night. And the one from the sixth is probably basically um, from the uh, from the chairman of the board, um, because he had, you know, he immediately um, talked to Danielle about it and had a, you know, wrote a memo. He thought it was coming from him. But Daniel made it from basically, you know, from the from the board and everything he said in that we agreed with. So, okay. and, you know, some of, some of the things I'm, you know, I, I was the one that, that, that looked more carefully at the, the plans after I heard um, from someone that these were really um, advertising stations more than charging stations. And that's when I found, you know, that the screen size in that can be almost a, as big as a diagonal uh, 60 inch uh, flat television now. So it's standing on the edge. It's not, you know, it's not horizontal, it's vertical. It may not be quite as wide as, as that, but that's a, a substantial size screen that they're putting up there. Um, and, you know, you dim it for the nighttime and it's still bright because it's nighttime now. You got it on bright for the daytime because you have to see it over the sunlight. So, you know, it's one of those, it's, it's just another item that makes it more dangerous to walk and to drive in a very, very crowded parking lot. Um, so. I mean, I think if, if we almost bifurcated this issue and we said, if Stop and Shop or any other retailer in that plaza was asking to put a flat screen TV in their front window with advertising, would we, how would we feel about that? And it's not quite the front window, it's, it's actually in the traffic pattern. And that's what makes me most uncomfortable is um, just a potential distraction to drivers and pedestrians. Because if you're not getting pedestrians attention, then your advertising isn't working. But if you have their attention, then they're not looking at the cars and the crosswalk and um, you know, getting, getting themselves safely to and from um, the storefront. And that is, it is it's just a very busy, active um, 
parking parking lot in town. Um, if I may, Madam Chairwoman, um, I just I guess wanted to other make another mention too that our station so the stations change the static signage um, anywhere between eight to fifteen seconds as well. I mean, so like I guess the idea of just someone staring and waiting eight to fifteen seconds for something to change. I guess it's just a very long period of time. Um, I would think that someone who is coming to and from in cold or warm weather is gonna wanna be in and out of their grocery store doing their shopping, doing their thing. They're not gonna be standing there waiting for the next thing to change over to read. No, I, I really, I didn't stage. expect you to be showing movies there that everyone's gonna uh, be park and okay. be so excited to watch those. Yeah. Um, great cinema. I understand that there, there's, there's static signage, which will, um, turnover at some rate of speed. But again, if, if you're not getting someone's attention, then your, your marketing campaign isn't, isn't being effective. Um, so there's, there's, if you didn't think people were gonna look at it, you wouldn't bother putting it there, is, is my thought. The um, you know, electrical vehicle charging, there's definitely a plus to that. I, I'm not sure that free charging is necessarily an incentive. I think people ought to be aware of what they're paying for a commodity <laughs> and for, I mean, not sure that that's a, but that's, that has nothing to do with the, the approval here. That's just sort of thought because it's not free. What you're doing, someone's paying for it, whether it's everyone else who's being asked to look at signage, that's, that's the payment for the service. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's just that my personal thoughts, I know, and I'm just one person on this board. So everyone has their own, their own um, opinions on it. But I, I think um, if we don't have anyone else here in the, in the public, or um, I think we, I did want to just mention um, the, the latest memo from the CPC, just to reiterate, because that is in the file, uh, CPC is in support of the building inspector's decision to deny the signage permit. CPC does not believe a variance would be warranted as there's no hardship in question. Um, perhaps we should circle back to that hardship question just for the discussion. And while CPC has approved the location of the charging stations through site plan review, the nature of signage was not explained or discussed during the presentation given by the applicant at the CPC's meeting. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Um, the earlier memo to us was a uh, citing, <laughs> excuse me, provisions in the zoning bylaws, which would prohibit uh, signage, flashing signage, moving signage, illuminated signage, intermittent signage, um, again, a reference to the difficulty of traffic flow for the site. Uh, the number, anything additional on the site could reside, result in accidents and incidents. Uh, da, 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 da. And the issue with the pedestrian crossings here. Uh, again, they approve location, but not use of the television LED imagery. Okay, that CPC strongly encouraged CPA not to approve signage. That, those were our two memos. I just wanted those in the file from um, our colleagues over at CPC. Before we close the hearing here, um, anything, any further questions for the applicant from board? Nope, you could. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Breen. Uh, second. Thank you. All in favor, Mr. Breen. Bob Breen, aye to close. Mr. Ragucci. Aye. Aye to close. Aye. All right. Closed. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for your, your information and participation. Um, so this is a going on. Now we get to deliberate and decide how we want to um, move on this for this evening.
to I think there are some very good points here, both from the applicant and from the board about, you know, this is, we do have technology that's going to be changing and we have bylaws that will need to change to be reflective of uh, uses that we want to have in the future. Um, there's also in our, our town master plan, a, um, uh, encouragement and movement towards trying to do what we can to um, improve and increase the the appearance and usage of Main Street coming through town. That has been something that um, hasn't necessarily been as much of a focus in the in the past, and it's an opportunity to to try to make this area better for the town as we go forward. Um, so I, I think if, to the extent, Michael, that you provide something to us to be considering for next town meeting in terms of addressing electronic charging and um, perhaps signage that goes with that, that could be helpful for long range planning. Um, but I think, my sense is from what I'm hearing from board members is as of as of now, I'm not seeing the way to to really permit this under our bylaws as as currently drafted. I don't want to speak for anyone else, um, but so please add your your comments or thoughts on this as we because this is our this is our deliberation. So in terms of my position, I'll be kind of clear. I'm disinclined, if not uh, opposed to the um, application. I'm uh, no disrespect meant to any of the other positions, positions offered with regard to the, the merits of the, um, the charging opportunity that's afforded. And quite frankly, I wish we were all in electric vehicles, quite, it's, that's not an issue here. Uh, but that not, not being the case, I see this quite frankly as quite honestly is it's it's a it's a an innovative very modest billboard and the control over the images is is speculative quite frankly i know we you spoke to that before michael but um there's just there's a lot of gray in this and while i think the role of the appeals board is to allow for us to step outside of situations to allow for a graying of black and white to especially accommodate need. Uh, I'm just not inclined to believe that the need that is being, that this is being presented in, that being uh, for uh, electric energy use, um, is really hand in hand with what it ultimately truly comes down to, which is positioned, uh, scaled billboards. Now, uh, if this is a hand in hand um, activity with stop and shop, which is again, I know it sounds old fashioned, bricks and mortar, you know, there's nothing to stop stop and shop from positioning signage within the store or even along their building perhaps, which directs users to the side where these, you know, ports could be located. And there are ways around this that would serve Volta and Stop and Shop's interests. But that's not my job to tell you how to perhaps position these. But right now, in terms of the way, the purposes of our board and the bylaws that we're we're working within, as Madam Chair has has acknowledged, um, I'm just disinclined to believe that this this is an would be an appropriate variance grant, um, given that it's hard to measure the nature of this uh, going forward. It's not Pandora's box in a classic sense. But the the, spec, the the speculative nature that uh, could bring about further attempts to 
uh, generate signage similar in nature, but differently placed would put uh, the town at a very, um, would be disadvantage disadvantageous to the town if we're trying to maintain um, uh, what the town so far has always proposed as, you know, for, for look, style, and uh, propriety. And I guess I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. before we, uh, unless, or unless you want to make a motion. No, I'll, I'll just add, I, I, I think, um, you know, the tone's been set. I, 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 I think we just don't have enough information um, and, and, you know, there's so many different pieces, including, I mean, what, what Bob had said about, um, stop and shop, you know, there, there's a, in, in this case, there's a, 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 um, a partnership between Volta and stop and shop. Um, at the first meeting, Michael had, had stated that, um, you know, that they'll be working off of the same meter as stop and shop. And I, I go back to whether or not, this is just in my mind, is this a stop and shop permit or a Volta permit? Because they're, you know, in essence, the building that, and, and this is what gets me back to the, you know, what, how is the zoning set up? Is it the owner of, you know, because we don't have an EV charging uh, bylaw, who owns the, the actual charging piece for, um, for this unit is is it is it a a contract between Volta and Stop and Shop and and actually the permit is with the physical building you know to to what Bob said earlier so I I just think the more I think about it there's there's just more questions that in a town bylaw need to be met before we um, we give our first to someone um, and and then not you know, to have a line of people that all want to do, you know, similar things that may have nothing to do with charging, um, you know, maybe some other type of product or, you know, it might be while you vacuum your car, who knows. Um, but but um, I, I do think it would be extremely helpful because at, at the first meeting you did say that you, you've done uh, model ordinances and, and bylaws in other places, I, I think we could use that. And my suggestion would be, because um, I don't think it's going to happen, especially between now and New Year's and, you know, early January, um, you know, that, that maybe um, I would suggest you ask for a continuance um, until the February meeting and see if we can make some um, progress with, with looking at this in the future, if that's what um, both you you agree to and what the rest of the board, um, you know, would would agree to, but I, I think it, it it's still going to take some time, um, you know, for for a entire process to go through, um, and um, you know, I, I I think the sentiments now are that um, if we had a vote right now, I think. Um, it would fail. And when I think realistically in terms of timing, if we were looking to consider this under a future zoning bylaw, that's not something that's going to happen until, you know, until the next town meeting until the until the bylaw is drafted, until it's presented at the next town meeting and it's up for, um, and then it's approved by the town. And so that's, you know, we're, that's spring at the earliest, whenever our spring meeting is. Uh, so I, I think it is something that I think the town ought to be considering how we want to handle charging stations, how they are set up, where they get located, um, what the what sort of requirements the town wants to build around them as part of our long range planning, but it's not something that um, we have at our disposal at this point, or that we will have at our disposal in any in any, any short term, uh, just given the, the the timing 
requirements of amendments to the zoning bylaws through the town meeting process. So um, that being said, I don't, I mean, I don't think a continuance is going to help you um, at that, at this point, nor um, technically can, I'm not sure we can give one given that we've closed the public hearing. So I think at, at this point, we need to make a motion on um, and what we have in front of us now. And, and then um, to the extent that we have different provisions in our bylaws going forward, that would give the, the applicant an opportunity to come back to us at a, at a later date for um, something different to be considered. But I think the, um, I think the, you know, the issue is, is the, the combination of, of the, the signage which is is is, pro is where the problem is versus the electrical charging stations, which I think would be very much supported and encouraged in the town, um, but wrapping the two of them together creates, you know, for me creates a creates an issue and it creates an issue under our bylaws as 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 drafted. Madam Chair, can the uh, applicant withdraw even after public hearing? If they wanted to do that, I believe that we could consider that. And at least in that regard, they wouldn't um, have to have the, um, technically, I mean, they wouldn't have to await town bylaw change if some different proposal were to be devised by them in terms of situating the charging stations or maybe positioning signage, as I think we've all kind of agreed that it is, but that's, that's for the applicant to consider. I just um, wanted to um, get a clarification for that from you. Thank you. And yeah, that I think we would we would ex you know we could accept a request to withdraw if the applicant was making that. I think that the concern that uh, Mr. Breen was raising for you is the the prohibition against coming back for a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, uh, under the under the bylaws as currently written. If they change, I can't I can't promise how that's interpreted under chapter 40A if that allows you to come back under a different provision, but um, I'll leave that to you to sort. Uh, yeah. Um, I think the applicant myself would like to withdraw given um, the comments from um, Mr. Breen um, and yourself, um, Madam Chairwoman. I think it makes a lot of sense um, to kind of give us a doorway to propose something different, maybe try to go back and reassess internally as to how we can uh, proceed maybe in a different manner, um, as well as maybe take it a look, a closer look at maybe drafting a text amendment. I mean, personally, myself, I would love to be involved in that process of helping the town um, come up with something that really meets your master plan to move it forward, um, coming just from my position of just hoping for the future and a better world ahead of us. Um, and so I would certainly um, would like to withdraw our application at this time in order to in order to consider other options and prevent us from falling into a prohibition period. Fair enough. And procedurally, Kathy, I don't think we need to vote on that, do we? Or do we need to vote on a I think you're, I think that's you're entitled to withdraw. So I so think they can just withdraw. All right. So all right, applicant has withdrawn this application. We may have an opportunity to revisit this at some point in the future. And we appreciate you coming and, and explaining your technology to us and, and the project. It gives the town, you know, definitely something to think about how to address this and issues like this, and particularly charging stations. I mean. They're going to need them. <laughs> They're going to need yes. them many places. So, yes. thank you yes. for thank you for coming in front of the board. We appreciate your appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, thank you members of the board, Jerry as well. I, I know you've all worked with us, um, kind of through all this process. We're not done. We'll be back with something different and better. Um, that, to hopefully, it. yeah. So hopefully thank we you. can move forward with. But thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right.
Where are we? I think we've had, we have an applicant who's been very patient waiting for us. I will say my voice is starting to go here. So uh, da, da, da. so this is we have 340 Main Street special permit for construction landscaping business applicant Jose G. Sa, who I know from driving by your site that you've been making a lot of progress. And I will just start off by saying thank you for doing the hard work to deal with some um, difficult tenants. Madam Chair, if I could introduce myself. Um, I'm course. Michael, I'm Michael, sorry, Michael Pinta, um, uh, Jose's attorney. Mr. Pinta, thank you. Please tell us, give us a, give us an update on what's going yeah. on. So the update is uh, when we last convened, which was two months ago, um, I had told everybody that uh, we were just in the process of starting eviction of the landscaper. Um, and we all said, well, two months is hopefully enough time. Um, but um, I'm uh, dismayed to report that, uh, you know, I think it's largely because of COVID, but and the whole system has changed about how you get summary process dates. And it's used to be that as a lawyer, I picked the dates. You can't do that anymore. So I literally was having to wait for the court and calling the court constantly. When am I going to get a date? When am I going to get a date? So anyway, long story short, our date for the hearing is a week from today. So the good news is it's coming up. The bad news is I think we all expected that that was going to already take place, um, but it hasn't. Um, so I fully expect, I mean, we haven't heard from the landscaper at all. Uh, I don't even know if they're going to show up, um, but we fully expect this is really about possession. Um, mm -hmm. They owe us money, but it's really about possession. So, uh, and I don't think there's any defenses here. So I fully expect, assuming the hearing takes place next Thursday, that uh, we'll walk out of there shortly thereafter with uh, a judgment for possession, which at that, that point, and I'm, I'm told um, I, spot, I spoke to Jerry earlier today and he had indicated to me that he thought that they were mostly out, which I think is the case, um, but they haven't, they, don't, they haven't made it easy for us. So they haven't told us that they're done and they're not going back and here's the keys. So unfortunately we have to go through due process and get a court order that says we have possession. Um, so that's what I'm reporting to you. And, you know, if you want to pick another date, because I think this is going to be over shortly, um, you know, we can certainly do that. And I can report to you at that time. Hopefully it's they're out and there's no issue anymore. Just a quick question with regard to the process. Have they engaged counsel? I've heard nothing from them. Okay. Nothing. They're, you know, not only has my client not received any rent for the last whatever months, um, but there's been no responses to notices to quit, no responses to, you know, complaint for summary process. Uh, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm anticipating that they're probably just going to default. And it sounds like, you know, they've already pretty much left the property. So I'm not even sure that they care about what's going on with the summary process. Um, but, you know, I, I never say never. You know, who knows what will happen next Thursday. <laughs> Mr. Pinta, do you have other tenants that you are needing to evict as well? Or is this the, the last? Uh, there's another tenant in the same building that we're in mm -hmm. the process of evicting as well. That's uh, known as a, it's a pain auto and truck center. Mm -hmm. And that hearing is on for the same date next Thursday. Okay. Same question, is he retained? Or is there been any? Um... Same, same answer, no, no contact from anybody. No response from anyone? And, nope. and, that, and, and that particular tenant owes a substantial amount of money. So that one's more than just about possession. Mm -hmm. The reason I ask is that um, a so, um, very clear understanding that you're very likely going to get the summary judgment. The question is more of a practical one. Are the courts, this isn't like a, uh, uh, a residential tenant, if you will, 
where mm -hmm. if they came back after the fact, the court might be sympathetic to their interest, especially during these times. So this is a commercial uh, tenancy that really is, and that's using the word tenancy uh, quite liberally in your case. Um, is there any chance that the court is going to um, give them a second shot at this even after judgment is entered or are they just gonna box them in as they probably should be? I mean, you never know what a judge in a district sure. court is gonna do obviously, but I totally agree with you is that if this was residential, there's all kinds of wild cards and that can show up, but in a commercial eviction, especially where one owes a lot of money, there's really, there's really no defenses. You know, I ask because, I ask because if the date we get, we take here uh, for you is, is practical, but it sounds like it will be because it is commercial tenancy. Yes. For a commercial judgment, a judgment against the business interest as opposed to an individual. I just asked that for practical purposes of going forward. Yeah, and I would concur with you. There's generally speaking, there's much less leniency by the court that you'll see on the residential side. And for good reason, because somebody's going to get thrown out of their home. So it's it's totally different. Sure. And it's no not that, that and it's right not that Christmas. and it's not that they were restricted because of COVID, you know, to, to doing whatever on that property either. No, they, to my understanding, they were running their businesses until fairly Correct. recently. So, no. Well, um, thank you. I very much appreciate you doing the hard work. I know it's very hard to get tenants out but to go through the eviction process, particularly with the courts during COVID. Yep. And your patients waiting tonight. Um, Kathy, if you could make sure that they're on the front of the agenda. Oh, that would be appreciated. Next time, because um, I, I know you, you waited waited very patiently um, through some. Um, so, so the commercial landscaping interest that's trying to go in there for, on behalf of your client, is that looking for electronic signage as well or should we just kind of take that as it comes? Uh, I think we should take it as it comes, especially in light of your opinions earlier. <laughs> we, um, we are encouraging all efforts to help make Main Street is <laughs> more attractive not, in our community. Not Route 1. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like Route 1. Um, so your efforts to clean up this site are very much appreciated. It is, it is the first thing you see as you drive in from yes. the north. So, um, it's been dramatic. Thank you. That's, that's, no that's making, making big strides there. Um, is January's meeting... Is that yeah. sufficient? I mean, and if it's not, feel free to just to give a note to Kathy and we can bump you to the next one. I, well, I, I, I know right now I'm actually going to be on vacation for those first two Thursdays in January. Good for you. Which, which I'm not going to apologize for, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is so, Zoom. Feel free to jump in. So uh, I would, yeah, I, I don't want to do Zoom while I'm away, though. Um, so I would ask. Uh, is that a possibility? Can we actually turn off Zoom when we leave? Uh, you know, a true vacation would be probably not taking any electronics with me at all. But that's wow. not going to happen. It's impossible. <laughs> we'll let you skip a Zoom hearing with us. Um, but I suppose that means we should look um, for a February date. Yeah, is it February 10th? Is that the date? I believe that would be our date. That's not um Bob, that's not a school vacation week, is it? It's your two not weeks. I'm aware of. I think it falls yeah. after um yeah, that it's after time. that. Okay, just wanna... All right, let's put that down if you would like to um, request an extension to February 10th. And Kathy, again, just please put the applicant top of the agenda they have been thank you well do. patient with, with with our hearing kathy we're gonna have to send you home you're you sound like you're saying <laughs> something i, I am home <laughs> you're home we'll send, get you off this zoom call um so mr pinto mr sa uh, thank you very much for for coming. We have, have you on our agenda for Feb ten. Enjoy your vacation much. and your holidays. Uh, thank you very as much. well to all of you, have enjoyable uh, holidays. If, if you do succeed at your uh, hearing, then I 
strongly suggest that when February's um, date approaches, that if you've got any uh, designs or um, plans that you're going to use for formally putting together a, pra a more practical presentation, that would be much appreciated by us. Well, oh, you mean in reference to what my client intends to do on the property? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll we'll uh, we'll try to have something together for the next meeting. Right. right. Thank you. And Bob, okay. Thank you. First things first. We want to get them out. No. So. Yes. No, uh, again, um, I'm I'm quite uh, I'm sure. Uh, good luck. Good luck on Thursday. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs> assuming assuming then, luck. Uh, assuming less luck and good. Uh, just. The process working, then um, I we we just don't want to keep you delayed um, in this process as well. Especially okay. since you've made such great progress with regard to this to the location so far. We've okay, taken good. notice, and I think a lot of people have. So congratulations. Yes. All right, thank you. Good enough. Have a great. Thank vacation. you, everyone. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think the only thing left, left on our official business is to approve our minutes from last month. And I'd just like to make a motion to approve those. Do we have a second? second. Right. And was that you, Bob? Did you second? I yes, uh, Bob Green, second. Thank you. And then all in favor? Bob Green, aye. Thank you. And Raguchi, aye. All right, I'll approve them too. Thank you for writing them up, Kathy. Thank All right, you. Big, big night, guys. Good job. So now we're on calendar for um, both January 13th and February 10th. Yep. All right. And uh, Jen, do you know, uh, Madam Chairman, do you know if that's your away? I don't. Okay. But I will, I will well, share just, that with you. Just so um, we can have, uh, we can maintain quorum. In the, oh, that's or, true. Um, no, if, if it's going uh, to be, um, just reach out. Let let us. The, I mean, the February date is the I think the more more important of those for quorum. Um, well, actually, we don't have anyone. If if I am, do, do, do. if if I'm not here in January whoever is sitting in for that one will just need to watch this fascinating video on the on the garage extension and then they can still vote on that but the uh, the the um, main street one since we've had multiple hearings on that that I think will require the three of us to oh well, certainly to continue on. That's great. Anything else? No, I know we're live. This was our first meeting. So I'll, right. I'll move to adjourn. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> uh, I will all in favor and everyone have a lovely holiday. Enjoy. Hope you get some time with your families and some time to relax and enjoy it. And we won't see each other until, until January, until the new year. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. See you in town. Thank you, everybody. Exactly. All right, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.